Hi guys, John with you again and it's time now for build update number 5 I think, number 5, well if it's not number 5 I'll correct myself, mind it what it used to be, so anyway this is where we've got to, alright we've got the, uh, the tank all nicely built up and everything else, uh, all its little weathering, the whole shebang, so you could say it's finished, this bit, so if I decide to say not to go ahead with the with the slat armor, it's finished. Simple as that. But I've decided to go ahead with the slat armor. Now, one, two little things I did get me ready to put on the slat armor is I decide I look into the instructions a good couple of times. I had to decide at what stage am I going to paint because that is kind of pretty important. Um, I mean, I can't paint it once it's on because I'm after doing a lovely spray job paint job and weathering the whole lot in the tank itself. So if I was taking this thing on the outside and then try to paint it, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a freaking nightmare. So therefore the easiest thing to do is paint it off it. Okay. Which creates its own little set of problems. You don't try and get it in all. You know yourself. So what I decided to do was paint it on the sprue. Okay. So therefore it's only a couple of little bits of touch up. So what I did then was I got a sprue and I removed all, okay so there's a sprue and as you see I've most of the connection points right have been removed off okay there was uh, outside pieces and here the whole lot the sprue all made up just have a little dual tidy whole thing here. same around here okay cut them all away and just snipped them off then cleaned them down so therefore the cleaning is done as well because you had all the little connection points there was loads of little connection points on each one right so I've all there's only four sprues involved in the setting of those yokes okay we've got our fitting pieces and we've got our mesh pieces okay so I have four sprues so now it's a case of which way am I going to paint them so I decided right are we able to be done in, 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 in reality? Okay. Now, I don't know for a fact that it's done this way. Um, I'm only kind of surmising, making a kind of a reasonably educated guess. In other words, I'm reasonably educated. Just about. So I decided first, they're going to be primed anyway. Okay, so they don't want them lost them. So they're going to be, they're going to prime them. And usually, usual say metal for pr primer for metal um, when you know in, in uh, engineering places and things like that uh, would be red primer red oxide primer because it's one of the, it, it's the best basically it's the best that sits there and it's good solid stuff so I'm going to spray all these first in hull red okay then when the hull red dries down, dries into them, I'm going to give them a coat of dull coat just to kind of protect it a little bit, right? The reason is then when I spray over the uh, the dark yellow, before it's fully dried, I'm going to kind of give it a, a, a sort of a drying brush. Uh, in other words, give it a, a, a rubbing down with with with, a, with a, a stiff dry brush before the paint is actually it dried in. But it will be dried in on the two levels underneath it, okay, as in the hull red one and the flat. So therefore I might get a kind of bit of a... Something similar onto the hairspray method, but just... Close enough, okay? So I'm not actually using a, something under the paint to reactivate or anything else. I'm just going straight in with a hard brush to remove some of it. Because I don't want as much, I don't want a big amount of it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Say, and anyway, on definitely on the uh, on the on the wire. Okay, the 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 the, the actual bars, the slat armor itself, whatever about the uh, see all the fitting pieces. We'll see how we go with them. But anyway, first step is to get them coated with uh, a red primer. Okay, and the one the red primer that I have is hull red. Okay, it's an XF fifty nine fifty something or other hull red. And that'll be our my, my first coat. Okay, so I get that done, we'll come back then and as usual we'll have a look at you know, between each step. Well, most of them anyway. 
Oh, I have to use this weird angle because it seems to be the only angle that I can get a kind of a <coughs> a good clear shot of the uh, of the parts. Okay, see, I come into the side there. So I've painted all the parts now with uh, hull red. Okay, I'll tell you, it wasn't actually that easy. It was actually pretty awkward. Well, time consuming. I wouldn't go awkward. What made it less awkward was the fact that I took out all the little bits and pieces. That would have made it very thick and awkward because when it comes down then to clipping them off and then all those little pieces have to be cleaned and sanded. And you're back basically painting what you've just painted already. But uh, they're all done now, okay? So... Like my little stand is the only way it would stand uh, when I tried to put it on one of these things just kept flopping over uh, here's all our supports again all nicely done with the, uh, the, the hull red oh, there's the other tree of um, slat armor okay and we have another one of the uh, There's the last one then, the, the last little tree of fixings. Tree of fixings. Okay, so the next step for these now is just to give them uh, a clear coat. Uh, just to give it that whole red, just that extra little bit of uh, protection because like I said I'm going to go over it with a reasonably uh, hard brush and I want to get down to the uh, to the whole red in places, not everywhere, only in a couple of places when I put on the, uh, the dark yellow. When I do the dark yellow, it'll be a case of literally do get it sprayed and then straight away, straight into the uh, um, <coughs> the removal of uh, any bits of excess before it dries in too hard. So I can get a kind of a nice chipped effect without having to kind of go around chipping each one individually. It's something I'm trying out. I don't know whether it's even going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a go. Okay. Um, so next step now is dry coat then and then um, it's pointless showing to you once they're dull coated because they're not going to be look any different but take it for granted that I'm going to do a dull coat on them uh, <coughs> and then I'm going to get one uh, sprayed up and we'll kind of carry on from there when I get one sprayed up I'll show you how I'm going to do the removal of it or the removal of the excess paint shall we say the bits that I don't want in other words I'll show you the process and if it works like I said you'd be and if it doesn't then hey nothing ventured nothing gained okay so the next time you see it we'll be working on one of these and uh, it'll already be say, painted and literally just painted put it down and then I'll uh, start recording and I'll show you a bit of the removal of the stuff and we'll see does it work out or not this little idea and if it does work out handy little tip for future and that is now I'm just finishing off finishing off the yellow coat okay and white it hasn't set yet I'm going to try my little experiment I'll put it down okay this is, the this is the brush I'm using, it's pretty um, it's pretty stiff, I, I use it for dusting off and things like that as you can see, but uh, let's see does it, uh, does it do what I want it to do. I'm not going to kind of uh, overdo it. If it works it works, if it doesn't then we're back to the, say, the original no, it's doing absolutely nothing. To me, a paint it just dries too quick. It just dries that a little bit too quick. Yeah, I'd have to go back to plan B. Okay, on to plan B, should I say, not back to plan B. So, um, we get them yellow now, okay, with the with the with the dark yellow. Uh, we'll weather it when it's all together. It's the only way we can do it. Um, I'll give it the old couple of little spots of chipping might do a little bit of damage on it and um, the rest of it has to be done so the, when the weathering stage with uh, with the with the, um, the old dusty stuff yes me, me pastels so uh, I'm gonna get the rest of them uh, down to the yellow okay and then we can start building okay we can start putting them on okay so these are now dry okay 
So I was going to kind of keep carry on with the, the build, start away straight away with the build. But between last night now and tonight, I've been thinking, how am I going to weather the insides? Okay, of that once it's all fitted, easy enough. Whether the outside, you know, do I'm talking about chipping now, a little bit of chipping, because it would get chipped in the inside as much as it would in the outside. So I'm thinking, I don't want it to kind of have it look, you know, nice and chipped and sort of rugged in the outside, and then the inside then you could, you, it's you can see through it. So you're going to see the fact that the inside is not damaged at all. So what I've decided to do is to do the chipping, do a, you know, a reasonable amount of chipping. No, just on these, okay, just on the uh, on the grills, and uh, I can do it then on both sides, um, and do it that each side, say the inside, if you get my drift, because I don't know which is the inside and which is the outside. I'm not going to look into the instructions for each one separately, but uh, if I do it sort of just enough that it would be adequate for the inside on both. When I put it all together, if the outside needs an extra little bit, I can do that, but at least I know that the inside has a nice bit of chipping on it as well. Plus it would get chipped from the top and from the bottom, so I can kind of do it from all directions. Now it is going to take a little bit of time, but hey, I'm in the humour for doing it at the moment, so might as well do it, okay? So I'm going to get them chipped and uh, then, then we might be able to start. Okay, so the chipping is now done on them, and as you can see, they are nicely, reasonably heavily chipped. Uh, kind of went a little bit overboard, I know that, but it's easy to tone it back. It's easy to tone it back. It's better than having anything, you know. And I also did a dry brush with the um, with the same color, dark iron is what the color I used on the uh, on the chipping, and uh, I gave it a, the all the all the little uh, straps and joining pieces I give them a dry brush with the uh, with the dark iron as well so it, they, they just sort of weathered up a bit okay not too much all right so we can just improve the lighting there and that so we can see it okay see just give them a nice bit of a bit of effect okay so now we can start building now we can start um, start attaching bits and pieces. So I'm going to get some of that done and we'll come back and kind of check in and on it every now and then. Okay, so we'll see how it's going. Let's get stuck in now to this stuff. Okay then, so as you can see I'm after getting one on. Okay, I'm after getting one of the front ones on. All fits nicely, but I didn't go the way the instructions told me to do it. Okay, the way the instructions basically told me to do it, I had to put in these hooks here first. All right, then say attach these ones to this or these ones to that, whichever the case may be, and then pop the whole thing on. But I, I, I just found it awkward getting the uh, getting, getting the little holders in there because you have to kind of. You have to wiggle them in, and when, once they were glued into position on the on the vehicle itself, they kept coming loose and kept falling off. So what I did was I just popped them all off and fitted them to the say the the grill first, wait till they were set basically, and then fitted the whole unit on. And I found it much easier, much much easier to go. Like the positioning in the of of these pieces. Is very very easy because they give little kind of cutouts on them. All right, we we we'll see. Can we see it now in this? Right, this is this is the, this is the piece now that would be going here. Okay, it would be going there like that. All right, and on the ins, uh, it goes into that. And if you hold it to a certain angle, you can see the little pieces there where they're cut out. Okay, see the little dips. Okay, that one there, and that's where the, uh, the the say the grill attachments will go. That's the positioning for them. So they're nicely marked, so you won't get them wrong. You shouldn't get them wrong anyway. Okay, so I'm going to attach the other one of them, and then fit the two sides. For fitting the two sides, I'm going to follow the same kind of technique as I used. Um, fit all these things, right? Well, this one is much easier because it tells you to fit them. Okay, fit all these things, have them in place, 
when the set then go for the fitting of it right and if we turn the page then okay you see it has these in place and you're fitting them on and then you attach all the little top bracing pieces okay once that's all in place so it seems to be sort of pretty straightforward uh, so we see how straightforward it is <laughs> lots of these things that say they're pretty straightforward to turn out not to be so let's hope this time that they do turn out to be okay so I'm gonna carry on with them and uh, let's just get stuck in and see how things go I'll show you then uh, when it's when, when it's all in, in place and we'll see how all that worked out okay then so I'm after getting them done now and uh, all the way around they went together actually surprisingly well a little bit fiddly uh, you know in, in getting things to sort of stay in place and stuff like that but uh, with a combination of super glue and uh, to me extra thin got it completed um, used super glue really just kind of you know firmly hold certain certain sections into place especially this curvy bit here making sure that this piece here was uh, was nicely aligned you know um, it, it, it was kind of awkward I tried to uh, do this this long piece here has, has that little curve here see it where it curves out and getting that to line up it was kind of awkward when I was doing it just trying to get sit it in place and then it said a little bit of super glue had two little bits of super glue there and there that held that in place then and then I could kind of fit it all the way along so once that was done then I, I used super glue in a couple of other little places just to kind of firmly hold things into place and then use the um, to me extra thin then to kind of finish it off and get everything uh, nice and square and, and, and all that uh, good type stuff so there we go the bottom section is done the hull is done right so next now we move on to the, uh, the to, onto the turret and uh, get the turret all finished off so once the turret is done then okay maybe we'll just have a look there and see because there's much to do to the turret and getting the um getting the, the the screens we call them screens i've changed the name so many freaking times right the bar armor screens right there doesn't seem to be that much there in that okay seems to be pretty straightforward all right and i'm expecting the same kind of fiddliness okay it's a nice word isn't it fiddliness making sure that all the little fiddly bits and pieces <laughs> are in place so um i'll carry on or i'll get it done and uh, we'll come back then we'll have a look at that when that's finished and then for a finish all i've got to do then is just get it weathered okay and uh, as you can see i have the weathering nearly already done most of it's already done already you know i'm just going to blend uh, all that in with a bit of a uh, bit of dust and stuff just like we did here on the vehicle itself so it looks nice and uh, you know uniform okay that's the whole the whole point making sure everything looks kind of around the same same type of weathering all the way around you know you couldn't have say one type of weathering on the tank and then a different totally different weathering on the uh, the outskirts on the, on the bar armor because it just it just wouldn't be right okay so i get the uh, the turret done we'll have a look at the turret and see how all that worked out then we'll uh, then we we'll put it together and weather the last little bits up and that'll be it then nearly and that'll be the finish so join me then when i have the uh, turret done and uh, we'll see how all that turned out hopefully like i said it won't be too fiddly will be fiddly but not too fiddly we're hoping okay so okay, let's get john just just get stuck in and do it john that's it we'll have to do it okay see you in a sec okay so now i'm after getting the uh, all the turret parts on right oops it easy so now it's just down to getting the whole lot weathered so what i'm thinking of doing i i think this is a bit too much if you know what i mean the uh the, the chipping that i did on it not that it's far too much it's just a little bit a little bit too heavy for my liking um so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to kind of um 
I'm going to give it a dry brushing of the uh, of the, de the desert yellow. That'll help to just tone it down. You know, a lot of these little areas here where they're just a little bit too dark. Okay. Now if we just get it a little bit closer, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. There we go. It's just a, it's just a little bit too much. Okay. It's not too bad. I mean, I get away with it, but uh, for my own personal tastes, it's just a little bit too much. So I'm going to tone that down a bit, and then I'm also going to make up my uh, my, my 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 sludgy wash. Okay. Where um, I'm going to use my pastels again make up the same kind of uh, dust dust wash that I've made up that I did the, the whole vehicle with nice dust effect it's really really nice really like how it turned out so I'm gonna make it up again and then add it to the uh, add it to the bar armor like I said earlier it's, it's nice that the whole lot then is weathered in around the same sort of uh, manner um, rather than say the inside being weathered one way and the outside being weathered the other um, it just it wouldn't make sense doing it that way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make down a bit of the wash and edit okay when it's all dry then same again clean off any excess and that should be it okay so the next time you see it it'll be finished simple as that nice and finished there isn't really that much more to do to it like i said just a bit torn down the um the 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 the, the, the chipping of the scratches so more like the blotches now but really so it's going to tone them down a bit and then um then a bit of dust okay so the next time you see it like i said it will be the final reveal because i will be finished okay and uh, i'm going to have a look and say i might have a, a suitable ish base um going back through my little selection of bases that i have here and uh, we'll see what the whole thing looks like all finished oh i yeah, I've just that's it stick the brush into my hand so here's my sludge okay i showed you how to make that earlier on there okay and it's just a bit of black brown sort of a sandy colour, a bit of white, a little bit of yellow, made down our dust. Okay, tiny little drop of uh, soap, liquid soap, um, be it washing up liquid or shampoo in my case, so I'm using uh, Lynx, Lynx Gold, so yay, it'll smell nice and it'll attract the women as well. Okay, so make it down nice and wet. Just rub it in like that. Okay, that's this side done anyway. So we go on to the back here, you can see the difference in the two. Okay, one is wet and one is dry. Okay, and like everything else, I, I usually walk from the top down because it's easier. Okay, you don't need that much of it because the more you put on, the more you got to remove if it's too much. It's easier to put on another little bit, you know, than. than sort of giving it a, quite a, a rough going in getting it off because it is pretty uh the method in getting it off it, it can be a little bit harsh and these even though they're quite solid okay the the um the, the bar armor it is quite solid on because it's nice and and uh, well cured shall we say the, the glue is all nicely cured but um still a little bit fragile okay not totally fragile but uh, it is a little bit fragile okay so nice bit out there okay again along the sides leave it dry then for, for an hour or two give it two hours anyway at least two hours if not longer um, what I might do is actually is, 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 is give it a full overnight let it, let it, let it go overnight and be guaranteed then that it'll be fully dry and, and I'll be quite happy with it then another thing as well then is even if the colors 
don't match up exactly to the sec to the original underneath because you're adding more it kind of flicks off the side so we're getting some of this uh, colored dust on it as well as in on the on the main vehicle on, on, on the side on the side of the actual tank itself so uh, I'm not really too worried then about uh, trying to match it up okay it'd be different if it was sort of a, a pre-made um, you know a pre-made product we're actually making our own bit of product but um, the only thing about it is you keep it as you see what I'm doing here okay I'm keeping it moving inside in the uh, inside my little tray okay and that keeps stops the uh, stops the, 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 the chalk I call it chalk because that's basically what it is it's a uh, it's pastel chalk it stops the chalk from settling okay we don't want it to settle here and get all water we want we want it nice and uh, dusty okay so I'm gonna finish off that and uh, when that's all done I'm gonna leave it dry like I said I'm going to leave it dry overnight and um, we come back then we'll see how much we've got to remove if we've got to remove any now I did say the last next time you're going to see it, it's going to be finished but when I started this I said well I might as well show people how I actually apply this stuff and it's literally like that okay okay nice and wet gunk mud <laughs> liquidy mud okay and just brush it on nice and ram ran random when you have an area a section done go back over it in a kind of a, sp a spirally motion a little bit of a twirly twirl okay and that kind of rubs it in gets it into all the little nooks and crannies I like that get into the nooks and crannies the crannies aren't too happy but the nooks are okay so I just finish off the last little bit there and uh, Let's see what it looks like. I will show you before I go cleaning it off, and uh, we'll see what the whole lot then for a finish. Now, so I'm after leaving that dry overnight, and uh, remember I said I was going to remove anything that needed to be removed just to get it right, but um, it actually turned out perfect. It really, really did. The amount that I put on was just when I let it, when it all dried, and I looked at it then today, it's just. I wouldn't add any more or I wouldn't take away any more so I'm, I'm really really happy with it so therefore I'm calling this one done okay calling it finished and uh, I must say it was a very very enjoyable kit to build a um, couple of little fiddly parts uh, nothing really too difficult when I say fiddly I mean like awkward you need a kind of a, a third and fourth hand <laughs> if you know what I mean uh, it's always handy to have a an extra pair of hands but um, I didn't have any so therefore it was a case of that's what made it fiddly as I call it fiddly awkward and things like that but I got it done and um, really really enjoyed it really really enjoyed making this one I must say but uh, overall happy with the result um, don't forget in the comments box below let me know what you think yourself um, I think it, I'm well impressed with it really really am um, it's one of my one of the the best kits that I've done. It's well up there. It's definitely in my top ten, if not my top five. As in uh, how how everything turned out, finish wise and all that. So, without further ado, let's go down to the bench and we'll have our final look at this um, one thirty fifth scale hobby boss leopard two A six M Canadian. Okay, so here we go. So there she is, and as you can see, I kind of put it on a reasonably big size base because it's it, it's pretty, it's a pretty big uh, big vehicle, a vehicle. It's quite large, so I needed a reasonably large base to sort of show it off. And this is about the only angle I can get to get it all in. So you're getting bits of the uh, bits of the computer and. I mean, we fudge the whole lot bit of desk and everything but um, overall I am really 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 chuffed with it um, 
lovely lovely kit like I said um, very very enjoyable build and it's a it's a quite impressive machine you know quite an impressive uh, uh, finished product shall we say now we will have a closer look at it um, I'll bring the camera in a little bit and also as usual at the end stay tuned and there's a couple of uh, couple of still photographs and uh, a couple of nicely staged photographs shall we say as well I used a sort of a white background without the um, without the, the beautiful base okay I'll do some of them as well so let's get the camera just a little bit closer in if I can without making too much of a, a, of a uh, oops easy too much of a, 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 a disturbance okay so a couple of close-ups get some light in on the subject All right and I'll give it another little spin now, as you know, I'm an, I'm an amateur builder, so therefore we've, we've got sort of amateur recordings as well. I don't have sort of high-tech uh, equipment for recording or anything like that. Um, there's plenty of channels out there if that's what you want to see. But if you want to see what sort of hobby builders do, this is what hobby builders do. And this is kind of the effects you turn out with. As you can see, the dust turned out really, really nice. Mix it with those um, pastels make up a nice a nice little mix and when it dries up and dries in should I say it ends up quite nice indeed um, everything works on the kit okay the, the, the turret goes around um, suspension doesn't work or anything like that it's not it's not that detailed of a kit but the gun gun elevates and drops and shooty things do what shooty things do okay but um, overall it's a very 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 nice kit and uh, like I said with the sort of the, the, the mud splashing effects worked quite well on those as well you know so there we go lads like I said don't forget in the comments box below let me know what you think yourself let me know how, how it turned out um, it's definitely a kit I would recommend I would definitely recommend this kit it is not a sort of a, a very new kit, but it's not a very old kit either. Consider, well, considering that the tank itself is, is, is a pretty new tank. Um, I think they've gone to the uh, the A7 now at this, at this point in time. They've passed the A6, but I'm sure that there are still some A6... No, sorry, Leopard 2 A... Yep, yeah, Leopard 2 A6Ms still in uh, service. Um, I'm sure somebody in the box will let me know, some uh, some of my Canadian friends will uh, inform me thusly <laughs> whether they are still in service or not, but uh, beautiful, beautiful kit, um, can say nothing really bad about it, to be quite honest with you, I can't say anything bad about it at all, um, oh, I really enjoyed making it, the, uh, the slat armour wasn't that hard, um, was a bit fiddly again like I said you know I need to have a sort of a second pa pair of uh, hands there um, but um, I used sort of a mixture of super glue and uh, ordinary glue not, a, not mixed together but a, a mixture of techniques sort of holding it in place with the super glue and then finishing off the gluing with the um, with the, the extra thin glue um, and, and, and everything went together quite nicely quite nicely indeed and um, give it one final spin okay we get it all the way around to the start again there we go okay let's so that was it um, the uh, hobby boss slipper 2 a6 m can I'm sure it can and it did oh <laughs> <laughs> See, they were going off. The, the camera has a life of its own. So, anyway, lads, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And like I said, don't forget to stick your comments in the box below and let me know what you think, how it turned out. And um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell. And by hitting the bell, you'll be notified as soon as I upload another video. So, 
with this one done we'll be moving on to uh, to our next project so stay tuned to the channel for that um, I usually as normal start off with uh, an unboxing and then build it up and we're sticking with a modern theme yes sticking with a modern theme for our next one so uh, hope to see you on that so in the meantime be nice to one another stay safe out there and uh, what else is there to say but go out and buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it this is John signing off see you soon lads take care